Hello everyone, welcome to Tutor IMG's short medical series. We're going to be taking a look at preeclampsia in its clinical management. Now, as we all know, that preeclampsia is basically high blood pressure that the patient experiences while we were pregnant. This high blood pressure is categorized as severe and needs to be treated as soon as it reaches uh, a limit of 160 systolic over 110 diastolic. It needs to be at this level for about 15 minutes for it to be considered actual documentation of high blood pressure. Um, the difference between these two readings, the measurement should be at least four hours apart, or it should stay high for 15 minutes. Or in certain emergent situations, even a few minutes apart can be enough if the reading is staying high. Anything below this would be considered moderate in the range of 150 to 159 by 100 to 109, or mild if it ranges between 140 to 150 systolic over 90 to 100 systolic, diastolic. Now, whenever a patient comes in with mild to moderate blood pressures, this is not to say that you're not supposed to take them seriously. They should be taken seriously if they have symptoms suggestive of serious preeclampsia. What are those symptoms? Those symptoms include raised serum transaminases. They include thrombocytopenia, right upper quadrant pain that is very, very persistent, neurological manifestations, that can include headaches that are extremely debilitating. Also, visual disturbances like scotomas, blurring of vision. So, when these things happen, we know uh, the patient can also, sorry, one more thing to mention is altered sensorium. Now, when these uh, conditions develop, the patient obviously is much more serious, even if the blood pressure range is lower than 160 by 110. Serum creatinine levels, when measured, will also be high in this case. So all of these things combined can give you an idea of how serious the patient's preeclampsia is. If the patient is indeed in a state of severe preeclampsia, then your step, next step, is to determine gestational age. Okay, so the parameters, if you're asked ever a question on the boards about the parameters that determine your decision, the parameters include the actual blood pressure reading, they include the presence or absence of severe symptoms, they include maternal age and fetal well-being, and they include gestational age. If gestational age is over 37 weeks, then you don't need to think of anything, you just deliver the baby. That's it. If the gestational age is not at 37 weeks, then what are you supposed to consider? Again, severe symptoms, right? You have to check for those. And they're just the same as mentioned before. In these, the serum transaminases that I mentioned should be two times the upper limit of normal. Also, another thing you can look for is a development of pulmonary edema in the patient. Now, if these are the situations, then you have to consider yet again what the gestational age is, because some of these symptoms will improve with hospitalization and can be managed. So gestational age plays a key role. Why do I say that? Because if the patient is in this state and the gestational age is 34 weeks, what will you do? You will deliver again. However, there are two other scenarios. One is that the baby is pre-viable, and the next is that the baby is viable, but under 34 weeks. So for the pre-viable baby, your question to the parents must be about termination. And if they are ready, then terminate the pregnancy. That is the best thing to do. If they're not ready, what must you do? You must then proceed to what we call expectant management. 
And what is expectant management? Expectant management is actually um, based on you trying to bring the blood pressure down, stabilize the patient, and avoid any of these severe symptoms from developing um, for as long as you possibly can. Um, and basically, when I say for as long as you can, you just want to bring her to 34 weeks so you can deliver. Now, this expectant management is basically going to continue unless certain um, you know, troublesome features develop. What are those troublesome features, which will mean that you need to now deliver the patient immediately? Those are, of course, fetal death, a non-reassuring NST, fetal weight that is now falling under the fifth percentile for that particular gestational age, a mother who's going into shock, a mother who has now suddenly, because of the high blood pressure, uh, presented with placental abruption, or preterm premature rupture of membranes. If these scenarios develop at any point in time, you will deliver, okay? Because your priority then becomes saving the mother and taking your chances with the baby, if the baby is alive. So gestational age, pre-viable, try to talk to parents about um, termination. If they don't agree to it, you have to proceed for expectant management. And if the patient has um, an, a viable uh, pregnancy, but it's not at 34 weeks yet, you might yet again try for expectant management. But this expectant management has its limitations as I've outlined them here. And you will um, abort that expectant management the minute those emergency features are achieved. Now, when I say that certain patients will be admitted um, at this stage and they will be um, you will be able to offer them expectant management. What is that uh, criteria? That criteria, I just want to explain to you as well, because that can be a scenario. That criteria where the baby is under 30, is around 36 weeks, 33 weeks plus six, right? That criteria can be that perhaps the woman has a blood pressure less than 160 by 110, but she has two labs that are upsetting. She has thrombocytopenia, and she has increased serum transaminases. But you're watching her and you realize that her labs are improving over 24 hours. If that's the case, you offer her expectant management. If this doesn't happen, of course, you will deliver and take your chances. The other case could be that the woman presents with blood pressure that is over 160 by 110, but her labs are okay. And this is the only problem that, you're, that she's having. And you start her on the therapy, which is always going to be IV labetalol and IV hydralazine. You can try either one of those two. And of course, always do fetal heart rate monitoring as well. When you start her on these therapies, you realize that her blood pressure is improving and her condition is balancing out. Expectant management is then offered as well. So that is how you will determine which method to follow on the boards and which answer is the correct one. I hope this helps you. Thank you very much. Keep supporting our video series.